Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. So in uh, April, uh, Roger, a long collector at heart, uh, showed us uh, three of the pieces in his uh, excellent collection. And he is back for your enjoyment to uh, share with us uh, his passion for three other excellent uh, long uh, watches from uh, his, uh, his collection. And uh, there's always something uh, a bit more special to the pieces that uh, he's, uh, he's after. And uh, last time we discussed uh, the reasons why he went into longer, how it was a bit uh, to get longer in the beginning. Uh, he was in the US back then. And um, yeah, the market has changed uh, a lot and we can talk a bit about that. But first, welcome back, Roger. Thank you, Daniel. Good to have you with us. Uh, hope your tennis game is, uh, is well. Yeah, I've been working on mine as well. Okay, so... Um, Is it as good as Johnny Guitars? Yeah. Uh, I haven't played with him yet. Uh, I'm a bit uh, worried. He might be a bit too strong for me. Uh, yeah, look, uh, before we get into the, the watches, maybe uh, this year, you know, the market is calming down. How do you see things? Are you buying watches? Are you looking at things short term, long term, maybe? I mean, of course, nobody can predict the future, right? There's just, just no way, right? Um, but I, I do think I've seen different cycles, right? And I do think we've hit a peak and there will, prices will come down. I, I, I do think so. But I don't know how to call the bottom. And for, for this brand, underneath one of the overlords, like Richemont, like mm. Swatch, like LVMH, uh, I think, I think the, the prices will continue to go up if you're looking at it from like, not so much from an investment, but from like not losing your shirt, right? Um, and especially the, especially the earlier pieces, right? There's just, mm. there's just not as many. And you can actually get the earlier pieces versus like, you got these FP Jorns now, like those original like T series, 600, 700, you know? At least, at least four to five and could go six to seven. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so it's just. Uh, Jorn and Longo are somewhat com comparable in terms of their output. And uh, well, longer probably. Uh, probably, I think. I think longer is more like five. Yeah, but in terms of the uh, like one thousand, I mean, how, how the brands over, overall have evolved and how they had early uh, pieces and how it changed slightly over time. Yeah, maybe it's a bit less special to get a uh, some basic longer one today, mm -hmm. while you could get things back then that today are regarded as very special. I don't just personally understand some of that, right? Like for example, um, I saw I saw this, uh, I handled twice these blue dial, first generation. The, the blue is lovely, it, it really is. But I, I, don't, I don't see why if you have a blue dial and it's gonna trade for 60,000 plus euros, I'm sorry, 60,000 plus dollars, right? Versus just some other early model one. So then, but then I've never been one of these guys who've been like, well, they only had, they only made the, these many. So there's, it's a, I don't understand, a four, four line Rolex versus a three line Rolex or like I, or yeah. the series is, is, is what, right? I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, if you, if you like the color, sure. Right, but um, I would say that of interest, and in you were saying that tying it back to the market, maybe people are taking advantage of the higher prices. Good for them. So if you go on to another overlord like Watchbox, these guys who like swoop on in, mm. buy, and so on, they have four, four of those blue dial Lambda ones on the site right now. Before you didn't see any, right? Yeah. So clearly the people are willing to sell right yeah because of all right they they can take, take the money and run uh, but in, in terms of the uh, retail prices that have increased quite a lot mm -hmm. with richemont 
it, in a way, it values higher the uh, the pre-owned pieces as well because hey, if you look how much do you have to pay for a brand new one, well then the, that pre-owned maybe uh, looks uh, affordable uh, mm. in in a way for many of their their watches, um, but maybe they are also uh, going a bit too far with it and it's difficult to uh, to to go back and lower your your retail price point what do you think of the retail price point of a, of a basic well basic uh, so we are talking a longer one or saxomatic um you know and and the thing is and this is why i'm jokingly make that reference to the overlords right yeah it it doesn't even it doesn't have to be a, a longer one. It, it could be a JLC Reverso, same. Which will so it's it's all underneath the umbrella, right? That being said, um, at its lowest, you know, for a normal longer one. Back in the day, you could get it on the secondary market for eighteen to twenty k mm. US. Right. Normally, you'd see them just depending on the type uh, in the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range. So retail prices have gone up, but on the secondary market, you can still get you can still get the um, Lama One for like say twenty five to thirty five k, just a normal model. So the, the 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 price on the secondary market on a normal watch hasn't moved as much as people would think but of course it has moved on the ones that the ones that say everybody wants so like um, a data graph right but just it's not as much production right mm-hmm. before for like the base model not not so much versus FPJ right yeah. uh, even the CS models have just gone through the roof so actually I guess I'm trying to turn around and say that uh, a longer one is much more readily accessible at a lower price point. It's it's easier to get into. Mm. Yeah. If you want, if you want to get outside of paddock, it's easier to get into a longer one than it is to get into an FBJ. Speaking yeah. of which, you were mentioning that uh, back in Europe and here in Hong Kong, there are watches available now. In the store, yeah, I think that's really different. Like during the pandemic, everyone was stuck at home, right? Yeah. And uh, and then, admittedly, um, supply chain issues. You couldn't go work in the factory, right? So they just there wasn't there wasn't enough watches. So uh, I remember I remember making some orders at the boutique, and it was you, you couldn't just walk in and buy it. You would, you would have to put your money down. Your, yeah, your thirty percent deposit, right? And then. Six, eight, twelve months later, you would you would get your watch, right? Uh, and then everything was just like Rolex ADs, right? It, even before they had the four display only, right? There was there was there yeah. were there were no subs, there were no da- no da- Daytonas, there was nothing, right? But now, um, yeah, I was in a, I was in a couple um, ADs and boutiques in Europe, and even here in Hong Kong, um, you can. You can walk into the Hong Kong boutique now, and they have uh, Lama ones, both the regular version, grand version, and so on, uh, available. Yeah, which is a lot more pleasant for the staff as well. Sure. I mean, it's not their fault, the market, how how it goes, and it's been like that before, and uh, then the market normalizes. It's nice when you can sell someone who walks in a watch. Uh, once in a while, I'm sure they're very happy uh, about it, and so um, yeah, that that should be the the normal and the special pieces. Bit more difficult, bit more patience, and um, and uh, yeah, uh, more more spending maybe on the on the on the brand. Anyway, you brought us three more watches from your collection. Uh, which one would you like to start with? Uh, I, I don't know. How about you decide? So maybe there's, the, there's the Saxo, sure. the Saxomat. Yeah, the, there are two automatics and one manual wind. Right. Right. Yeah. Let's uh, sandwich the uh, manual wind and uh, start with uh, with this very thin, longer. Let's take a look. 
Maybe you can talk about it, I'll try and find out. Yeah, you're thinking uh, under 8 millimeters, which uh, could be quite right. So this is the Saxomat no date. And uh, year wise, this would be from early 2000s, I think we were uh, talking. Not quite a micro rotor, it's like a half rotor. Uh, it says from 1997, 1997 on, yeah. Really interesting because I have taken some interest into Chopard who re released their first caliber for the manufacturer in 96, it's called the 96, which is very well regarded. And then uh, competing with the, the 240, which I have, uh, might as well show it, in my uh, Patek 6006, so the well-known 240, which it's from the, was started in the 70s, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And then, uh, yeah, longer comes with the, the, the Saxomat with a, a totally different well, style. It, it, it's still a micro rotor, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not the full rotor yeah. from, from with, the, with the pin from the center, right? Um, I looked it up, sorry, just since you, you had asked. The one with update, so this one, is 36.8 millimeters in diameter and 8.2 millimeters 8 .2. in thickness. The one with the date is 37 millimeters. I don't know about you, but there's no way I'm going to be able to tell the difference with 0 0.2. And then, yeah. um, and then 9.7 millimeters. And, and I guess that's to handle like the, the date, right? And, and it's got, I wouldn't say imposing, but uh, lugs with character that uh, you, nobody should worry about uh, their masculinity wearing a 36 longer because it wears with a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of character on the wrist uh, thanks to the, the, the beautiful lugs. So, yeah, what can you tell us about uh, this one? When did you get it and why did you get it? Um, I think I actually picked this one up in Hong Kong. There were some friends within the watch industry that had, that had uh, picked it up and then just couldn't let it go. Uh, th there, was a, there was a particular... Um, I had learned about this movement because this movement is a base. There's, something called the Langomatic Anniversary. It's, it's a white enamel dial with a number tw red 12. So, so I, that's the one I wanted to purchase. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I was uh, instructed by the accountant to not purchase anything with a red 12. <laughs> so so this, uh, this is what I, end, uh, what I ended up uh, purchasing. Um, anyways, to talk about the watch itself, what they have a, on the micro rotor, on the outside of the micro rotor, um, there's a platinum, yes. um, not overlay, but like attachment, right? Mm -hmm. To give it, to give it more winding oomph. Yeah, more yeah. mass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is interesting about it, to, to me is I think the company has a patent such that uh, when you pull out the crown the sub-seconds will reset reset to to 12 so it makes it it makes it incredibly easy to to set the time maybe I can demonstrate by okay. maybe you want to move the time. moving the time let it run a bit and uh, there you go. Ah, so practical. Then you set, you set your time very precisely. So the the hands, which are loomed, by the way, uh, very. And, and I love when they the, the size of the tip of the hand is exactly the the size of the minute track. No, no that, I think the tip of the hand is it bending down? Slightly, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's for some sort of. Yeah visual diffraction, something, something, so it makes it so that when you see it, mm. 
you it's just more accurate for you to see like exactly when when the time okay. oh, yeah, so you, you can see how it's, it's bent down right? yeah yeah it's so very precise for the uh people like me i don't know you but i, I need to set them exactly at the second so actually i don't know there's this thing so if you were to pull the crown out now does it fly back in the same direction or it's so fast you can't tell it, i think it went the other way but it's really hard to, to say i, I could um, slow down your I, i'll slow down on, on, on the video yeah and then we'll uh we'll put a result on the video because uh it's hard to say if it goes uh one or or, or the other way uh, we'll find out that mystery yeah i call it the um i call it the tuxedo watch right because is that how you feel uh is it for that kind of event or you can wear it casually i think it's been worn quite a bit yeah it's been worn it's worn, been worn quite a bit but like for like everything's a complication, right? The, mm -hmm. the second hand is a complication. We don't really need it, but it just it shows that the watch is running, right? And then a date is just so like useful, right? But when you're like uh, when you're doing like black tie or whatever else, it's like you know you you really don't need a date, right? You just need to know what time is showing up. You already know what the date is. So uh, I, I like I like this for those really formal events. But no, mm -hmm. of course, uh, I, I will wear it regardless. Right? I'll wear it to the office. Uh, I'll wear yeah. it with jeans. Um, uh, it slides underneath the cuff. It's it's really discreet. And because it's um, it's white gold, it's not flashy at all. Question, how long have you had this one? Uh, 15 years, 10, 15 years at least. Yeah. So my shorts, so German silver, apparently it tends to change color over time if yes. it's untreated so i don't know how treated it is this this has changed it, it looks like it has taken different hues it has changed because um because when i had purchased it i had um if i'm going to purchase uh purchase it it's not directly from the boutique then i end up taking it to a to to get serviced yeah and so then from that point it's it's got that silvery color right and then over time yeah it, it absolutely does it's, it's, nice. a, it's a honey color and um otherwise running running well no problems yeah uh yeah just running perfectly and the rotor is you find it silent yeah it's uh it's not oh i'm i'm gonna give the presenter a, a hard time yeah. what's that japanese maker that you were buying uh. That, that independent Japanese maker, Kurono. Oh, Kurono, yeah, the one that the ones that I sold. <laughs> Most it's, importantly, it, it's got some Mayota rotor that, yeah. that, that keeps you up at night because yeah. you just. Uh... And then this one is uh, this one is quiet. It's quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't hear it. Why well, not GLC, Patek, and actually Rolex as well moved to those ball bearing rotors and uh, supposed, supposedly leave. Less, uh, there's less risk of damage uh, falling into the movement and blah, blah, blah. It's more efficient, but it's also noisier. And personally, I don't see any problem with the uh, older ones. Um, but yeah, gorgeous. And just one number on, the, on this one, 12. Uh, so, and so this is more of the, um, I would say this is, I mean, just to compare, I think this is more like almost kind of like Nomos, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. like, how do you pronounce the German thing? Bauhaus? Bauhaus? Yeah, Bauhaus. Because there's there's no no date either, right? It's just it's it's extremely German. It's th this this watch. It's it's no nonsense, right? It's purposeful. It's very purposeful. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a nice way of putting it. It's very very purposeful. Yeah. How does it uh, fit on your on your wrist? Because because you are you are Mister. Mr. Paddock, you know, like how does it, wow. does it slide, a, does it, does it I slide, wish I was. Like this fine, you know, because, uh, as you can see the, the lugs, how does it compare to your 6,000 in terms of so this is cutting the, the wrist? Yeah, visually it, it's a lot s smaller, especially since the 6,000 is at 39 plus long lugs. Um, 
the 6000 will have a, a, a lot more. They both might like die also. A lot more time. presence. See, close on, close up on video, it looks almost like it's too big and uh, overhanging. But not in real life, no. No, in real life, no, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, in real life, nobody sees the watches like we see it in the in the phone right now in the in the video in real life. Uh, you see it from from, from there, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, just fine. And I like to have those long legs that give a bit of uh, of presence. And this one also has a very uh, it's a twenty two millimeter. Oh, it's 22. Or, or even 24, I mean, I think it's 24, it's very, very large. And it's one of those, those things that's, uh, that's quite different with this model, is that it's got a very large, I think it's 24, um, strap. So totally different way of wearing it than uh, most does, does dress. It, does the strap taper to a normal size so you can switch out your deployant? Or um, this is a specialized deployant for... It's a it's a large one that that I can tell you. Right? So you have a lot of extra white gold with this uh, the deployment class. Uh, it's probably still eighteen here at least, or even twenty. No, it can't be twenty. But but yeah, very different model from anything that Patek does, right? So it's even hard to compare to uh, to this. I think you would have to compare this to uh, to another. Calatrava style. Ah, uh, that's probably fair. Yeah, Calatrava. Yeah, I do like. I don't know if you can capture on it, like the, you, like the sub seconds, because of the circles. Right? Yeah, the dance with the light inside, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, yeah. Uh, and then you can you can see how that section is different from the main dial, right? So it's yeah, it actually it's does a a rainbow effect. There's like uh, eight different rays of rainbow flying from the center on, on, on the video. I think uh, these these were not as popular mm -hmm. as um, as like the traditional manual wines on the one. And in terms of going up in value, um, it may it, it may not necessarily appreciate as much, but um, I totally respect someone just having a Saxonia or Langomatic and and even the automatic because it's just mm. that that, auto, that that movement is just beyond mm. amazing. Yeah, I will tell you personally, I'm a big fan of the Saxomat. I like the ones with the date. I like the ones with the moon phase. Uh, more and more and if I had to get one it's almost like a reaction because the longer one is so iconic that I, I don't want to I want to go for something slightly different and the Saxomat is great. Yeah and then the other thing I would mention is and just to talk about the, the manual movement is although it's beautiful they, they talk about the three-quarter plate and because of the three-quarter plate you might not I'm sure you've got the glass shoot, the striping, and everything else, yeah. but you might not be able to, you know, see as much versus like the, the datagraph, right? The datagraph, yeah. which is like this mini city, right? Yeah. Well, same thing. These earlier Saxonia Langomatic automatic movements, oh, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing to see the, the, the micro rotor and everything else. So, I know. I felt the same with my, annual calendar 1815 mm -hmm. I thought hey the, uh, I, for a lot less I could have put the up down and I have almost a little bit more visual because it's an extra plate for the up down than that one which hides the whole complication yeah. <laughs> it's the it's, it's something you, you have to know if you're by longer is that those three quarter manual wines they will look very much the same even the complicated ones yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, depending on the type of watch. And then, I mean, I wonder, like, um, the brand being very German, they make improvements every single time, but then they will, they will course correct. So they went, they went for this uh, 1815 chronograph. And then in the second gen, the, the dial was less fussy, mm. but people didn't like it. And then, yeah. so the, when they went third gen, they went back to the original style dial. And so when they 
improve the movement on the Lama One. Um, and by improve, it would be like it's got uh, when the movement would wind down, right? This is just really nice things like we were talking before about setting time, right? Mm. If the movement loses all its energy or close to all its energy uh, for the updated movement, they would have the second hand stop at 12. So just that is the ultimate, right? Just so, 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 like, so then when you're going to start again, right? It just then you, you know from your time perspective. However, on that second movement, uh, second gen movement, you lost you lost an island on the back. So if you go back to the if you flip this over, see there's there's two islands on on the movement. Yes. What we call islands. The updated movement only has a single island. So even though the the function is better, it's just not as aesthetically pleasing. There's mm. not as, there's not as much stuff going on. Yeah. And so then, but then. The, the, the brand will course correct. So there's another updated movement for the Grand Grand Lango One. And the Grand Lango One, now you have the two islands in the back. <laughs> now, I, I wonder if like enough people complain and said we wanted to see a little bit more, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, in terms of buying into the brand, of course, buying new is great, again, for that functionality. But um, buying these pre-owned in what? Because they can be more than 25 years old now, neo-vintage pieces, you probably get, there, there, there are things where they show like the, uh, the striping, the finishing back then yeah. is actually higher than current production. Ooh, that is controversial, sir. No, no, no. So I can uh, we I can I can show you if if we were to do it um, maybe if you take a look at the yeah take a close uh, shot and later on you take a look around the micro rotor take a look at the the prolage yeah you know, in terms of making the number of little circles right. Yeah. It's pretty much uh, and then if you compare it to the perlage on the current watch. I'm afraid to look. Okay, so wait. Do you feel that there are less and these are bigger than the previous one? Yes, but as you turn it, you still get a beautiful effect. Oh, I'm not necessarily but, talking about, uh, but, but I'm talking about like if you want to have manufacturing efficiencies in yeah. the, It's a bigger watch as well, so they may have gone for a bigger parallel. Uh, you're correct. So what we what we are we are not directly doing a mm. apples to apples comparison. What I'm trying to say is if you were to take a current model yeah. Saxonia, let's go to the shop and compare. And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> let's expose. And, well, it's not exposed. It's, 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 it's just it's just different, yeah. right? Like, um, let's look at the uh, the stripes as well. So we're jumping the shark a bit here, showing you the. Uh, Look at this off, oh, this off, is. off camera. Man, it's showing me some uh, engraving. So, so this was a this was a, a limited edition, twenty five units Japan market, right? So you've got you've got the floral engraving, which is what you have on the balance column, mm. right? All over the but, dial. All over the dial, right? Is this something that the company would do today, given the manpower required? Yeah. Versus back then, right? It's just different, right? And uh, well, it's the problem when you get successful in Switzerland and in the glass shooter is that you, you, the manpower just isn't there, right? You gotta train it. It takes a lot of time, and then you have to sell watches to make a lot of watches. There's yeah. only so much you 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 can do, and not to say that the longer cuts any corner, you know that uh, the entry piece is as good as the uh, the highest level 
but there, there's also a business to run, and probably they would want to engrave yeah, so more. I'm, so yeah, so I'm not yeah. So yeah. To, to be very clear, it's this balance like what they talk yeah. about George Daniels, right? How many watches that George Daniels actually make? Ten. Yeah. Something right. I mean, you, so you have to balance it, between it gets industrial ma industrial yeah. manufacturing, and then the fact that you've got. Okay, so what we can clearly say is that one of one of the brands' tags to fame is we're going to assemble every movement twice. We're going to put mm -hmm. the watch together twice, right? So the the person's going to yep. put the watch. There's going to be a watchmaker who's going to be putting it together twice, yep. right? But there is that human limitation factor, right? So. So yeah, no, I mean, I support the brand. I like the brand, right? I I love the fact that every different generation there's improvements in the brand. But I'm just when I when I say some of these when I make some of these comments, I'm just being nostalgic for yeah for some of the but early days and things that you could it, do as you know. But that's what's interesting. With uh, you realize when you see the GPHG nominees and you compare brands that can produce several hundred watches to brands that are just starting and do a beautiful artisanal, artisanal work for f at best 50 watches that they, uh, will take them three years to deliver and you compare one with the, with the other and what well, is great to have now all these competing to, together uh, but yeah, you have to be realistic and the advantage you get with a brand like Longer is that they've been there a long time, they're established, and you buy a certain sense of security. While when you buy from an artisan who can do 10 watches, if he gets run over by a bus tomorrow, nobody's going to be able to uh, redo any, any pieces. So continuity and perennity of the brand is something that, that takes a long time to build. Yeah, and then also there's advantages to the size. So like you can you can walk into the Rolex service center here in Hong Kong with your 20 year old sub, right? And yeah. expect to get it serviced. You can do the same thing in New York, Rolex service center, you can do the same thing uh, in London. It's the same for, it's the same for Londo, right? Most watches, Londo watches are gonna be able to be serviced locally here in Hong Kong or New York, okay? Not London, it'll be glass uh, yep. but uh, you can do, but say someone who's smaller, like FPJ, everything's got to go back to, yeah, to six Switzerland. months. Huh? Right, so, but it's two on one hand, one on the other, right? Mm -hmm. what, what are you going to do? Right? Well, it's something you got to think about when you buy something, right? Uh, and it's hard to, to project yourself five, seven years in the future when you buy, obviously. But uh, oh, if but most importantly, if you buy pre-owned, you know, it's the whole thing, right? Buy pre-owned, you're buying very fragile early models of Jean. Be prepared for. Is it the same as buying a '90s Ferrari? Be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> There's more adding up to the to the bill. It's funny when people talk about like you know, if you don't have one watch, it's like, well, then you're gonna be be without that watch once uh, yeah. away for service, like. The Hodinky like two watch thing, and it's not a bad thing. You should yeah. have two or three. Have a, have a Rolex along just, with the just, 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 just have two or three, so you actually have a watch when, when, the special event yeah. watch or something needs to go up for service. And having said all that, longer feel and are known to be rugged. Not maybe play polo with it, but compared to uh, to Patek, uh, feel feel a bit more more solid. But eventually, they will also have to be uh, to be serviced. Yeah. Um, well, maybe uh, since we have those two in shot, we can move on to sure. the longer one. So this is a platinum longer one, Darth. Generation one. Um not the earliest of models because the earliest models had the solid case back. Two models that were made in platinum, excepting like steel service watches and so on. Um, one is with a black dial and one is with a rhodium, is that how you pronounce it? Oh, rhodium, yeah. rhodium dial, yeah. The one with the 
uh, light color dial is called Stealth because it's platinum, it's got that light color dial. People really can't tell whether or not it's white gold or not. Yeah. And the white gold model has a loomed hand, but otherwise people can't tell. So they, they call that one Stealth. And the Stealth one is actually uh, more le legible than the Darth. Sometimes, depending on the light, you might lose the hands uh, on, on the dark, which also happens with some, these current model uh, Richard Longo uh, jumping hand ones. But otherwise, um, and then this one just ended up being called Darth. It's 38 and a half millimeters, no different than any other one, except uh, for all the colored dials, what they did on this one is normally you will get the um, black hands on the white background date. But for the platinum models in the black dial, that's the thing, they, they flipped it. So you only, you only see this on platinum models. So it's a white hand on black background date. I guess the hands are white gold? I think so, yes. Do you find it legible? I find it legible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, just like the catches the light. Right? The the Langomatic, It's nice to see with like the sub second dial, the uh, the concentric circle. The second generation movement uh, has the one where um, they they improve things like the date changes mm. uh, is is better uh, right around midnight, and then the uh, when the power reserve runs down, they will stop the second hand at twelve. Speaking of the, the day change, is it risky to push after 9 o'clock, say? I don't know. Um, I always wonder, I, 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 because I, it is so there, right? That uh, yeah. so easy. I, but Knowing longer, I'm guessing it, it's super safe. I'm guessing it is, but uh, I've, never, um, I've never had the, the pusher activate accidentally. Yeah. Just n never, right? Yeah. Nevertheless, let's move the, oh, there you go. We have a nice day change and we moved out of the uh, possibly risky zone, unlikely, knowing longer. And so the, the pusher feel, which is a big part of the, the longer pleasure. And uh, it's not as nice as the, um, the data graph, but it's still right. There you go. Now we have the two. Is it a watch that you have worn a lot? Yeah, yeah. I, I wear all my I, I wear all my watches because yeah. um, I know I can send them in to the brand and get it back exactly like exactly like new. And if I get a, a really huge dent or scrape, they won't just polish the watch; they will add metal in it, metal to it, and then it comes back looking. Including for the platinum. Including for the platinum, yeah, it just it doesn't matter, yeah. And movement wise, I can see it also has a different hue. I yeah, guess. it'll be it changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, it'll be more silvery if upon you. you might want to check it on the uh, the other watch. Yeah, so the. Uh, no, I meant the uh, here. Yeah, the, this one has, it seems like the color is a bit uneven, while this one the color is sort of evened out. That's a, that's a great uh, pleasure, I think, with the. Uh, my shore. The yeah, German you can silver. see it's much more silvery. Silvery, yeah. yeah. Versus this uh, golden color. This is just uh, Odysseus, by the way, you know, like easy, <laughs> easy watch to find. As we mentioned, you have the full platinum deploy and clasp, so it's a good counterweight. This is the I will never sell watch. Right. Uh, although, to, to, I really thought about it. I really thought about it because yeah. during the during the frenzy, what two years ago yeah. now, during the frenzy, uh, instead of instead of trading in the high thirties and forties, it was trading in the eighty plus. Wow! And uh, I said, I love you, but maybe not for eighty. I can buy you. I can buy you back in five years <laughs> for half. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, I wonder if some people do that, you know, they got rid of their favorite pieces 
a year and a half ago and then buy them back now. <laughs> but uh, no, I, that's I, arbitrage. Uh, but uh, I, 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 this is this is my uh, my two watch collection. This is this is one of the watches in my two watch collection. Yeah, if I, I sell it, everything, it. right? This and and another watch. I like it because it's an icon of longer, but it has something a bit special that others. No, or the longer ones don't have, you know, being there. And but, those have that feel again, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah, got the weight. Uh, can we do a comparative reshot? I like my 6000 for, for the same reason, right? It's interesting movement wise, visually, it got something a bit different. And yeah, these two are closer in terms of the, the size. What I, what I like, with uh, Patek is that they do a different case for every watch almost mm. and uh, it's more sensual in the curves mm. sure. uh, while the, the longer has a pretty much the similar same case for, for everything um, mo mo most models which is uh, also part of a brand it's, a, it's like a signature you know it's like the oyster of Rolex like the, the Rialo uh, case a brand needs strong visual signature and uh, I think that the case of longer is part of it. Uh, you recognize a longer from, uh, from the side. Um, I guess uh, moving on to, uh, yeah, as I said, the watch at, uh, yeah, very easy to get. Huh? It's been a bit of a, bit of, bit of a trip for you to uh, a bit of a journey, as they call it, at the boutiques mm -hmm. to, um, Acquire this uh, Odysseus, which is still uh, under wraps. It's interesting today. Uh, there was this uh, Hodinki uh, video with John Mayer, one hour video, and he said something which, interesting. Which, which one is he uh, pump, pumping now and it's going to go through the roof? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, 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 it was it a, a, Japan, green, green, a, a Japanese watch. Okay, not a Greenland hotel. Mm -hmm. No, what's interesting, no, but he, he said something, he's got, he's got the watches, priceless watches that he wears all the time mm. and other ones that he had to have in the collection, mm. but hasn't made his yet by wearing them, you know, putting yeah. things. And this is how I, I, I guess you feel is that you had to have it. You had to get that in the longer collection because it's a, it's a must now, but you haven't made it yours yet, worn it to the tennis call dropped it in the bag <laughs> you, you, you know and just like made the first thing and like think oh whatever now i can uh, enjoy it fully yeah 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 uh it's the since we were talking about it's the first blue dial one i've had right because you know those early blue the, yeah the blues and then like those uh 25th anniversary ones yeah. and like second generation blue ones uh, and it's um I think I think you and I and Johnny Guitarist have talked about just from a what what is it about sport watches? What is it about sport watches and divers that it, that blue tends to be the mainstream I think color? Or something? One, it works with with the uh, with the metal, and two, it works with everything you wear, mm. and it can be casual because when it gets gets too black, it gets too dressy, mm. and the black strap also makes it limits you uh, wearing it with uh, with jeans mm -hmm. uh, but the um, yeah there's something with the, the blue dial that, uh, that just resonates for their blue dial it's it's a little more gray so you got the day date which one do you know which one is the date uh, you just press the top yeah oh that's a strong yeah strong it's not integrated into the case right you don't you don't notice it this one actually softer for the the day. Now people have complained and said like it should be the same. Yeah. And then other people are like, well, that's a specific uh, design decision. Uh, so I don't know. It's like is, is it a bug or is it a feature? Right. Yeah. So. But yeah, but because the, the the date on that one is is quite soft, more like this one. Here, surprisingly. Uh, hard. Hard. Yeah. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Loom on the new. The indices and hands. How does the loom look this time? If we, uh, <laughs> since it's not twenty-five years old. I think it's because this room is kind of yellow. Uh, so our loom shots are pathetic. But don't uh, 
hold it on longer. It's not not their fault. It's uh, it's us. And yeah, movement wise, this time we have a full full rotor. Yeah, everything's full rotor now. It's more efficient. Yeah. Yeah, this this watch is here is different it's for efficiency. 120 meters of water resistance. I really like the clasp. Um, yeah. Uh, personally, I actually like. Um, those little butterfly clasps versus, yeah. versus this. So I think they're a little like integrated in the bracelet. You know, but I, I do love this this button feature for the yeah, it's excellent. For, for the for the micro adjustment. Just what you it's need. Just, it's just so easy. Like you're outside, it's incredibly hot in Hong Kong. Yeah. And, then, and then just that's what the doctor ordered them. Yeah, it's just on it's, every watch. It's just so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you're going to get a little bit more bulk, right? You know, if you're being a keyboard warrior, right? You know, versus that small part of that one. But, but, but um, no, I, I, I really do like that. And the design of the bracelet, which... It's fine. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you get it, used to it, huh? Well, and not only that, but like if you're... Uh, in real life, like people... Right, it's just like we say, like seeing something in photos versus real life. In, in real yeah. life, it's nice. Every version of this watch, except for one, I, I find suitable. So I like this one. Um, I like this one, maybe not, um, because just in general, I'm not a big bracelet guy. Mm -hmm. I love the white gold version of this one. Yep. Um, that strap just feels amazing. And I also like the color of that uh, white gold one. I've not seen the titanium one, but watches on bracelets that have titanium, I in general like. So I, those Grand Seiko mm -hmm. snowflakes, uh, uh, I I really like it. So every one of these, I I've put this one. I've had the white gold also on my wrist. Um, the one that I'm not sold on yet, though I did have on, on my wrist with the dummy movement, was the uh, chronograph. But that, it's it's thick. It's it's Is big. It? It's big. Yeah. And then, but that could just be for for my wrist, right? Uh, just different watches, different size wrists, and so on. But that that is a that's a big that's a, that's a big. You know, you know, like a, like don't you appreciate those Grand Seiko uh, chronographs, right? But they are big. Yeah. Pieces of metal, right? Yeah. Yeah. This but yeah, but this was begging to become a chronograph with the, the two push outs. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And what movement actually did they use for the, the chronograph? Is it brand new movement? Uh, I, I, don't I don't know. But it's, it's not a manual one. It, it continues to be this, yeah. uh, this, this automatic one. Okay. I think, I think it, I mean, so this is, this is something that I also, again, love the brand for is, you know, when the Zeitwerk came on out, people were like, what? You know, like, what is this? But, you know, they, they created a whole new watch line. Yeah. Right? And then and then you had this eye work, and they would do things like the striking time, the decimal time. They would make a date version of the Zeit work. Right? So they so they, they, did, they did all these things off of the new line. And then, same thing now. They're making sport watches. Right? And it's a whole new line. Right? Like, when... When was the last time this brand over here came out with like something new? Uh, but something, like, what was like we're waiting, waiting mm -hmm. for it, right? Yeah, the longer one, the, the sax, uh, saxomat, uh, this, the even the, the lumen, the 1815, the lumen as well, and everybody. Uh, that that's the one that um, would make. Um, make your heart tick a little bit faster or skip a beat mm -hmm. uh, lumen datograph oh that'd be amazing yeah that'd be the oh, oh actually you know back in the day you know, before everything blew on up i had it on my wrist don't remind me of that story <laughs> no at the boutique and <laughs> yes, I, like, I did. No, no, i had it i'm like eh, it's too sporty it really does have this yeah Sporty, completely different look than any other datagraph. It, it was, it's not dressy. I mean, it's really, really sporty. It's got the the lumen version of that one with the outer uh, ring 
has that same look like those ghost Submariner uh, dials, the ones that you know go to that, yeah. that type of gray. It's it's that same type of uh, gray look. Yeah, yeah it's completely. Yeah, it's completely and I mean, you know, it's one of those cases where you have to trust the brand to know better than you what you will want in five years. Yeah. Right. Sure. Because there's a job of a designer not to do what everybody wants because that's what we see mostly in the watch world is people copying the design that they know are going to sell a few watches but you know that's what they did with the Odysseus oh they're doing a sports watch and then it comes out it's like oh what is this everybody hates it and then now everybody wants it and they know they see forward but also it takes time for people to get uh, used to a different visual and um, yeah you gotta trust trust the brand to know better than you how to spend your money. Wow, so that's an uh, impressive trio. We've seen three watches before, the one perpetual. Have you been enjoying that one? Oh, it's nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a nice it's, watch. It's, it's, the, it's the daily wear. Yeah. It's a perpetual, right? Yeah. So it's, a, it's a daily wear. And I, again, like, again, I don't mind beating it up because you can go back to the factory and yeah. come back fresh. Yeah. We saw your datograph, just what is there more to say, just yeah. incredible piece and, uh, and the lovely homage to uh, Emile Longue. Well, you remember it. Okay. Of course, I, I know it well, the first time we met, uh, you were wearing that one. Uh, how many pieces in total in your Longue only collection? That's class five. Yeah, yeah. but so we, we, there will be a part three to this. There, there, there could be, yeah, yeah. If, if there's enough interest, right, yeah. Yeah, so guys, uh, you know what to do, huh? Hit that like button, button, huh? and uh, subscribe. Because most people watching are not even subscribed. And um, I don't, of course, I can't talk about longer every day. Uh, it's like a little treat. I like, I like your, I'm sorry to interrupt, your video from the other collector on the FP genre. Yeah. And also the, the clown watches. Yeah, you yeah, like those. Huh? I like the clown watches. Yeah, there's just so many different things to to enjoy, and yeah, longer we don't get to see m many of them. I wish I could show more of it on the on the channel. So it's a big treat that you bring us every time. Mm -hmm. And I do think you'll get one more longer this year. Is there something that could be on the radar? Uh, th there, there are things, but. For like the VIPs that I don't, mm. I don't qualify for, but yeah. Well, at least you have the passion and you share it, so that's uh, something we can be uh, happy with. And yeah, I like I like that one we we saw that. Um, oh, Breguet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're making a big push in Hong Kong. There yeah. was just a big opening of the new boutique at the center of central Hong Kong. They have yeah. a big. Uh, rose late engine that actually works and you can go there and uh, make your own little are they swatch are they uh, uh LVMH? yes no it's uh, break is a swatch group swatch group um, yeah yeah the operational and uh, yeah it's about time that Breguet comes back to the forefront because what they do just like Blancpain, they do amazing things but quietly the most amazing things are quiet yeah um Okay, but we'll wrap it up here because okay. it's a long video. Uh, thanks, Roger, for stopping by between the uh, two tennis games and the gym and everything else. And uh, good luck for your tennis tournament. And uh, yeah, good luck for the, the next uh, longer adventure. I know that you have uh, always things in the works. It's great that um, the collection keeps on evolving. All right, All right guys, bye-bye.